Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Recently, an interesting paper came out from the MIT about the great gen AI divide. So, what does it basically say, at least from the invest investor's point of view is where we are diving it from, from. Of course, there's a lot more in the paper. If you're interested, I suggest you go read it. It's around 26 pages long. But from the inter investor's point of view, few important things it points out, which may have led to the correction we've been recently seeing in the Nasdaq, especially in the tech heavy stocks. First, it says around 30 to 40 billion dollars have been spent and 95 percent of the companies see no return on investment. He says that means investors cannot blindly chase every AI because majority of them are stuck in pilot phase with no path to a profit or loss impact. Second thing which it says is the real opportunity is very narrow. It says only 5 percent of AI vendors and adopters are crossing the gen AI divide. Winners are the ones who are building adaptive learning capable tools and that are integrated into real workflows. These companies capture very sticky enterprise contracts with high switching costs and multi-year revenue. The old software as a service style play is very weak and uh, the broad features and generic tools are not working. Internal builds fail twice as often and invest in startups that go deep with work specific high value use is the case rather than changing broad AI platform. So, targeted, you know, strategic surgical strike in AI is what is making money. Uh, back office is where the hidden gold is, says most of the flow has been happening to sales and marketing because it's visible, but it says a real return on investments has been coming from back out, uh, office automation, which here in India we know, which is BPO elimination, compliance, finance and risk checks. These kind of grunt work which Anand has always been mentioning, there is where the real money has been coming in terms of return and investment. So, where is the next multi-billion dollar company? Well, that is where the billion dollar question is. So, timing is very critical. It says the next 12 to 18 months will separate the hype from the durable winners. For investors, the window is very critical where we decide to invest in the companies we pick, we should be very careful about is what the point is. So, all this put together, I thought we will discuss this and the correction we are seeing in Nasdaq is this, you know, just plain old fear and there is some value here or what Anand has been saying for some quite a long time that AI is very specific on what it can do and cannot do, should we be focusing more on that. So, Anand, what do you? See, as far as forget the technical jargon. Hmm. At a company level, enterprise level, I don't see much of it happening. As far as me, I'm concerned, there are two major players in this from a distance what I'm watching. I'm a layman. I'm so a I. techie. Yes. You are more techie than me. That doesn't make me one. Though. Yeah. <laughs> there are two places, two big players as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. One is Google, the another is Microsoft. Hmm. These are the guys who are making moves as much as I can see. Because I don't shop regularly on Amazon, I so I don't know what Amazon is doing. I don't use Facebook. So, leave me out. Now, in Google and Microsoft, Microsoft in its Office 360 has integrated Chat GPT. In its workspace, that is Google Docs and those kind of things, Gemini has been incorporated. What Gemini is trying or Google is trying to do is make you use Gemini without you knowing that you are using Gemini. If you are doing Gmail before, you are using Gemini now. If I want to send an email to Vinod, I can ask him a Gmail to type out the mail in whichever format I want and Gemini will type it out for me. I think Gemini can also in a Google Meet summarize the meeting and give all the important points to me. Now these are useful things for me. I am too lazy to write a Gmail. I am too busy to write take down the minutes there. of a meeting or take down notes. So, instead of my sister assistant sitting next to me and taking down notes, Google Drive itself will summarize and give the notes. These are two examples where I have seen where Jimny has come. I am Vinod also informs me, in Microsoft's equivalent of Google Workspaces, Jimny has made a lot of interaction. I am also told in YouTube, Gemini is playing a role. Where Microsoft is leading Gemini by 29 points to 11 is in cloud spaces. 
because Google itself has very little space in cloud. He's trying to play catch up with Microsoft, Azure and Amazon. So Google, Microsoft has 29% of the market share and Google is fast catching up with some 13-14%. But even I'm read somewhere, I don't know how it's happening, so Vinod will tell us that. Even in Microsoft ecosystems, Gemini has penetrated. So Gemini is making inroads. Two and a half years back, when ChatGPT was launched, everybody thought Google is stumbling. Google stopped stumbling last year, the year before, and last year caught up at par with uh, ChatGPT. And now I am told, in actual billing numbers, without people realizing that it is being built, Gemini is slowly stealing into a march. If you look at the actual numbers, even with 18 to 20 minutes of months of chat GPT, Google search is extremely strong and is forging ahead. This is because people do not want stories, people want information. When you search, you want information, Google can give you that information. Specific search can give specific information. Whereas chat GPT is used by more by students, professors who want essay type answers or who want a opinion on something. Like if I want to know about stoicism, chat GPT may give me a better answer. But today, Gemini can give me an equivalent answer. But if I want to go to a temple, and I, Google is a better place to search for it. So Google is doing extremely well. So whatever I can understand from this paper and reading outside, Gemini has caught up with uh, chat GPT. And there's another guy, perplexity or whatever is that guy. That guy is an ex-Google guy whose software is now worth $18 billion, who was also caught up. In fact, he has told Google that he is willing to buy Chrome. If the court orders are break up and finally it has to be broken up, he is willing to buy Chrome. So, as far as I see, there are three players. There is a chat GPT, there is a perplexity and there is Gemini. Today, Gemini owns the ecosystem. Chat GPT is using Microsoft systems. I don't know who, how perplexity will evolve. But you cannot buy chat GPT, you have to buy Microsoft. Microsoft is very expensive for me. And then Google looks the cheapest of these guys. This is what I understood. But on a technical point, maybe Vinod can add more. No, the main thing what the paper is saying is 90% of the workers who use LLM, it's all used personally. And 40% of the companies, though, have official licenses. Most people don't like using it because there's resistance towards new tools. And, uh, you know, poor model output quality, like you rightly said. The user interface is very finicky. And uh, people just want something which is fast, familiar, and flexible. And they don't want to learn more and more tools. And they can't able to remember it. And as all this is evolving, the next big place in this whole AI game seems to be a gentic web where agents are created, where we give tasks which go and you can do a complete thing. Like you can go tell it to book my ticket to Singapore and find out visa. The more hotel. advanced version of Siri and... Uh... Correct. Those kinds of agent is where the future is. And like you rightly said, that is more on a personal level. Then how does this be integrated into uh, office ecosystem and agents you know, like supply discovery, negotiations, you know, real-time integration, you know, workflow optimization. I really do not know how that will happen in a corporate level. On a personal level, yes, I can see it like you rightly said, with chat GPT, perplexity, cloud, or whichever you use. But on a corporate level, this is where the question mark is. And that's why investors feel maybe they've bitten more than they chewed. Like you said, in terms of co-pilot at Microsoft, and we are seeing corrections across the board that maybe we are thinking there's far more revenue being created than actually it will come. Yeah. Thank you for watching Be Rich. I hope you like this content. If you like this content, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you do not turn on the bell notification, you will not be notified every time we put out this video. Once again, I thank you for your support for Be Rich. Thank you.